Hello everybody and welcome back to Broken Berean and today we're going to be taking a look at the United Methodist Church. Now we're going to be covering a few topics and explaining a few things based on my knowledge of the Methodist Church and other Christian denominations. So this isn't going to be an in-depth look into Methodist. I'm not part of the Methodist Church so what my knowledge is based on is based on articles and people that I know and have known that are in the Methodist Church. Now, there are two major Methodist denominations. It's their groups, what we would, what I'm used to calling convention. Um, there's two groupings of Methodist church, one that's primarily American, and more accurately, North American. Um, there's a few, there's a few in Canada and a few in Mexico, but it's primarily America, and that is the United Methodist Church. Now, there's also another one that is primarily centered in Africa called the Global Methodist Church. And they have, they're in much more countries, but the bulk of their churches do reside in Africa. So, about three years ago, no, take that back, about five, about five, six, seven years ago, we saw the Presbyterian Church have a full-on split in America. They, I believe they split to the uh, Presbyterian Church of America and then the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America, something like that. I can't remember the exact, but they literally split over this issue. They didn't, like, some churches didn't leave and some stayed. No, the, their denomination literally split in two. And the reason for this is a bunch of them said, we're going to embrace the alphabet lifestyle and we're going to accept them. We're going to ignore the fat, ignore the scripture surrounding it in the Old Testament and in the New. Uh, and that split this the, the Presbyterian denomination. A few years later, the Methodists have now done that, probably about three, maybe four years ago at the most. And they didn't split, but they had about a quarter of the churches leave the United Methodist Church and join the global Methodist Church, which is much more conservative and sticks to biblical principles that follow the philosophy that the Bible should be the lens in which we view the world and not the opposite direction of the world is through the lens in which we should view the Bible. So with this, the United Methodist Church, and I'm gonna call it the American Methodist Church just for simplification so we don't get too confused, the American Methodist Church has lost a quarter of their churches and their denomination and now are facing a 43% budget cut to continue operating their churches as they do. And this means cuts across everything. And from my understanding, um, like in a lot of traditional like Baptist non-denomination church, when you look for a pastor, to lead your church, it's the local body that gets to decide that. That's not the case in the Methodist Church. The Methodist Church decides what pastor goes to what church. So Methodists is kind of like, they're Lutheran light, and Lutherans are kind of Catholic light, so in their ecclesiology. And so the Methodist Church kind of decides how all the churches will operate and function despite where they are in the country and the culture in which they live. And this can be a good thing, this can be a bad thing, this is this is just how it appears it is set up. And I think this is going to be a hard road ahead for the United Methodist Church. Because with this huge budget cut that they're going to be taking, having to pay for maintenance to their buildings, upkeep, paying for their staff, it's going to be a huge, that's a big budget cut. And they're going to have to shutter some of their programs. And based on a few quotes I read a couple other places, it looks like some of their foreign missions are going to be cut, some of the local missions are going to be cut, some of their um, outreach to local places, such as like um, uh, clothing, food shelter, homeless shelters and things like that are going to have to be cut and consolidated into other groups 
and other things, and that's not a good thing um, because that literally helps the people that they're willing, they're trying to serve. But the American Methodists have appeared to, just on the few quotes I read, they didn't outright say it, but they're going to stick with the path they're on. Now, and that's that's kind of a dicey thing. It's obvious that a majority of them didn't like, I don't want to say majority, a large portion didn't like them, so they left. And as this continues on, they may see other churches and their denomination may see the same thing and be like, we're out of here. We're gone. And the Methodist church may really suffer and come close to being a tiny little collection of churches within America. And the only thing that's going to bring the Methodist theology back into America would be the global Methodist church, which is much more conservative. And honestly, they really haven't been interested in planting churches in America. They've been outreaching to Asia, Europe, and uh, I believe Australia and New Zealand. So that's kind of been their focus. They haven't really looked at America, but they may have to now because the Methodist church here is collapsing. And now they have some churches here that have left and joined them, so they have some a foothold. I wouldn't say foothold, but uh, they've got an open door into America now. So, I mean, this is a lot of things where they have to decide whether to continue on this path of, using culture to define the Bible is correct, and I don't believe it is. I, I'm not going to spend here trying to convince otherwise, but from a Christian perspective, this is the wrong shift, and I think it's going to dwindle. We've seen the PCUSA, which I believe is the more liberal Presbyterian split, continue down the same, it's shrinking, and there's like, well, we just you say this is right when we read the Bible, we can't reconcile it without doing gymnastics. And and it's not and it's not hate, it's just this is this is our beliefs that and we think we should be part of a body of believers that believes the same thing. So our brothers and sisters in the United Methodist Church are gonna have some problems for the next several years and this could be this could be a really hard time for them and I'm like I said I'm not Methodist I am Christian and I'm not advocating for disruption of Methodist or any type of outrage I'm just looking at it from an outside perspective at what the United Methodist Church is going through and this seems to be the deci this decision is the hill that they're going to die on and that's just not a good thing. And they have to really come to terms if they continue on this path, they may not have a church left here in America uh, or anywhere, to be honest. So if you're a Methodist and you've got more insight on this, please comment below because I, I am more interested in learning about it because I don't have very many Methodist friends left because the few I did have are no longer Methodists. And I'd like some insight. What are you seeing? What's going on in your church? Have you Has your church stuck with the United Methodist Church? Or have you all gone to the Global Methodist Church? I'm, I'm curious of what's going on. So just give me, a, give me a shout below. And just let's kind of see what's going on, just so we can kind of keep praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ. So with a heavy heart, as I always say, I love you all, and there's nothing you can do about it.